In my last video, I talked about the possible location of Dr. Wendell Tully and what role he might play in the ending to the Grounded story. Many of you shared your theories in the comments of that video, and some of you pointed out things I missed in the full release trailer. In addition to that, I completely forgot about the original theory I had that prompted me to make that video, so in this video, I'm going to look at the alternative theories proposed by you, as well as share my original theory to find out if I was wrong about Dr. Wendell Tully. Before we begin, I want to thank King Bling Blah Gaming, Lyndon Dade, Matthew Campbell, Stephen Van, The Overseer 91, and all my channel members for helping make videos like this possible. Click the join button below or the link in the description to become a channel member today. Thanks again to all my channel members. Let's get started. So what I want to do to start this video out is run through all the suggestions that you guys made in the comments of the last video as to whether or not you thought I was right or proposing alterna alternatives to what I suggested was going to be who was the monster, was it Dr. Tully, and so forth and so on. And the one I want to start with is the one I think was the most common, if I remember correctly, and that's that the 15, it would be the 15 that's missing from this case here, which of course is at the starting spawn area. This is a obviously a still shot from the trailer. If you go to the starting spawn area in the game, you're going to see this. There has always, to my knowledge, been five places for what looks like shrunken humans in this suitcase. And honestly, I don't believe this has anything to do with the ending to the story because the developers have said there's only going to be four characters in the game. They've pretty much said there were not five characters, there were not five people inside the suitcase and stuff like that. So I don't believe that's going to be and have any involvement in the ending of the story. And I don't think we're ever going to be told if this if there was a fifth person on here. I could be wrong. Maybe they're going to surprise us. But all the information we have to this point just kind of like strikes this as possibly having anything to do with who that little monster character that was shown in the trailer. And aside from that, I just don't think it is going to have anything to do with the story. The next suggestion that was suggested by a couple people, specifically Dirsch and DBAM, they suggested that the monster that we're about to see, I'm running this in super slow-mo just so we can see the couple of frames where it's going to show what looks like the monster. They suggested this monster might actually be a robot or a mech. Now, I watched this about 20 times and I don't see it, so we're going to let it run really slowly. If I'm missing something, let me know. But I just don't see this being some type of robot. So obviously here on the left is the monster. We're just going to let it play for just a little bit. And as of right now, this is in the highest quality I can get from YouTube. I don't see anything here that would suggest that this is any type of robot or anything like that. There's no, somebody said there was wire sticking out. I just don't see that. I think maybe these, this looks like maybe webs or hair or something like that. And I just don't see anything here. Maybe they're thinking this leg piece down here, which almost looks like it could be a knee pad or something to do with these boots down here. Maybe that's what people are thinking this is a robot. I don't believe that's the case. I could be wrong. Like I said, if there's something I'm missing, let me know, but I don't see this being some type of robot or mech or anything like that, or having perhaps Dr. Tully or someone else being inside this as a suit and having it be a mech. And then aside from that, one other thing that was mentioned by both Locke, Ian and Ethan was that this might be the D&D &D character from the picnic table. So what I'm gonna do in just a second is I'm gonna hop over there and we're gonna take a look at that because it does in fact, and if we look, when we look at the, at the end of the trailer where it shows the still frame of it, it does kind of look like that character. And aside from that, another one that kind of makes sense, and this was uh, suggested by Sean Allard, was this might be the abomina abomination totem or it looks like the abomination totem. This doesn't actually look like the abomination totem because obviously it's a different color, but the thing at the end of the video, which may or may not be this, does look like the Abomination Totem. So let's hop on over to the game real quick and take a look at both the character that's on the picnic table in the D&D, as well as the Abomination Totem to see if this thing looks like either one of them. So I made my way over to the picnic table. First thing I wanna look at before we go into the actual maze up there is this book over here. This is called Minotaurs and Myrmidians, it looks like something like that, or Myrmid Myrmidons. I can't really tell what the second word is exactly. This kind of looks like a Dungeons and Dragons book, so I think it's kind of just supposed to be a play on that. As you can see here, this monster here looks like the Minotaur, which would make sense because the Minotaur maze is up there. Some people did suggest that perhaps the we're actually going to be fighting or playing the Dungeons and Dragons or whatever this game is here, the Minotaurs or whatever game, to finish it out. I will say that the coloring here, as well as the arm piece, the arm here does kind of look similar to that monster shown. The legs don't really, because obviously the Minotaur down here has, I believe it has... Uh, at the bottom of it's a horse or something or a bull. So I'm, I obviously, I guess it's a bull because it does have horns. So the legs did not look the same. They look kind of more human-like. There's also these things over here, which may or may not be the abomination totems. I'm going to craft one when I go up to the maze, and we're going to take a look at the monster in there to see if it does look different than this. But there have been people that obviously have suggested that this may, in fact, be the the final boss or something like that, the Minotaur, which obviously could be the case. I mean, I mean not obviously, but it could be the case because it would be pretty interesting if finishing it off, we did have to 
have something to do with like playing this board game here. So we're going to head in here really quickly, take a look at the statues as well as build the abomination totem. And I think these statues are, I believe, I believe they're all the same, but we can take a look at them. So yeah, this does really look more similar to that monster, obviously, because it's got the, the feathers here. And let me go into photo mode real quick, just to, we'll make it daytime, just so it's a little bit easier to see, because it might be a little bit hard to see right now. So let's brighten that up just a little bit. That's probably as good as we're going to get. And as you can see here, this looks much more similar to what we saw in there. So perhaps it's going to be that whatever it is, is going to be either one of these, or maybe somebody was turned into them. Maybe Dr. Tully was turned into them. If you remember the old movie, The Fly, I think it had, I'm pretty sure it was the, I'm, I think it was The Fly where Jeff Goldblum was turned, I think it was Jeff Goldblum was turned into like, was mixed somehow into like, or turned into a fly slash human or something like that. I believe that's what it was. So maybe that's what this is supposed to be. And what we can do is we can really cra quickly craft a, we'll make ourselves the abomination totem. I am in creative or a custom game mode, so I should be able to craft it. And here's the abomination totem. And we will just place that next to it as reference. And then once again, we'll go into photo mode, just so it's obviously gonna be easier for you to see, because unfortunately I came over here at nighttime. And as we're gonna see there, the abomination totem, to be completely honest, doesn't really look that doesn't really look like what it is. I mean, maybe we're gonna have to fight some of these or something like that, but I'd say it more likely will be this. Maybe that monster is this, maybe, but this kind of looks like an ant. So I don't know if it's gonna be the Minotaur, if it's gonna be this, or if it's gonna be something completely different, but let me know what you guys think. Does that make sense? Do you think this, do you think we might actually fight these? Do you think we'll be doing the D&D stuff down in, or at the end of the game or at some point in the game? Let me know about that down in the comments below. And with that said, that's we're gonna head on over to Burgle's lab, because there were a couple things suggested about Burgle, uh, possibly being the final boss as well as something else to do with Burgle's lab. So let's head on over there real quick. Another common suggestion, of course, I've heard this many times before, but specifically both West T and Dragon Leader Lee suggested that Burgle might be the final boss. And this was for two reasons. One, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. I, 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 well, I'm looking at the trailer because it's going to be easier to see on here. You'll notice on the front panel of Burgle, there's a couple things on here. It says cook, flip, and kill. The kill doesn't have a button over here, but... People have suspected that because it says that, and also perhaps Burgle is getting, perhaps Burgle is the final boss, and maybe the reason the chips were spread around was because Dr. Tully knew that Burgle was gonna end up being dangerous, and the reason he hid the chips was so Burgle couldn't harm anybody. So there's been, obviously, both West T and Dragon Leader Lee suggested that repairing, getting all the chips for Burgle would possibly end up having him be the final boss, and of course, with his kill thing on here, maybe that's gonna happen. And then in addition to that, there's some other things around Burgle's lab. So let's take a look at outside Burgle's lab to show off the next thing that was suggested by a couple people that who, who the final boss might be. So I'm just outside Burgle's lab. This is, of course, a fresh world, so I haven't repaired the mysterious machine. Up here, you're going to notice this camera. If you've played through the game at any, any part of the game, went into any of the labs, you're going to notice these cameras are all over the place. And one of the suggestions that was made by both Niftier and Breck was that the Watcher is gonna be the final boss. Of course, the Watcher is men mentioned in some of the, I don't know, I believe it's either the audio logs or the notes, can't remember exactly which one it is, that there's somebody watching over, and I think it's believed to be the Ominent Technologies, the company that Dr. Tully used to work for, and it suggests that perhaps they're watching over and the final boss is gonna be one of them. It might even be that monster, or it might just be someone else that is actually the final boss. In addition to that, a couple other things that people suggested were some different people, uh, but who was it was hardboiled and Spartan Zero suggested I think hardboiled was the one that suggested that Dr. Klein uh, Which is one of the scientists that Dr. Wendell talks about uh, either in the audio logs or in one of his uh, notes Was someone he disliked and people have suggested perhaps Dr. Hardboiled suggested maybe that Dr. Tully brought that brought Dr. Klein to the backyard shrunk him and he is actually gonna be the final boss. And then Spartan Zero suggested that perhaps this is just a different scientist because of course, where with all the different labs and with the skeletons all over the place, it's a possibility that perhaps the final boss is just another scientist that either got mutated while being tested on, or maybe just is just got ang was angry with Dr. Tully and now he's trying to get revenge on him. So, and then aside from that, another thing that people suggested was maybe it was a different missing teen of course, if you know, there's skeletons around the backyard. There's one in the ant, Red Ant Hill. There's one over by the, where you get the, uh, what is the, not the abomination totem, the ant, to, ant head totem over here by the hedge in like the hedge wall. I can't remember if it's, I think it's over here somewhere. Maybe it's down here. It might be somewhere down here. I think it's down here, yeah. 
that the there's a cave with a skeleton in there. There's also a skeleton up in the upper yard by near one of the retaining walls, which leads us to believe, obviously, that there's been other people that have been shrunk, whether or not they were other teens or perhaps they were other scientists, not sure. But obviously, in the beginning of the new tra- in the full release trailer, they did mention that these four teens were the most recent missing teens. So that is obviously meaning there's other missing teens. And perhaps they're going to be, maybe that's one, maybe that's who the final boss is. Maybe it's a missing teen that was being experimented on or accidentally got turned into that monster. And perhaps that is going to be the final boss. And while we're over here by the oak tree, Shark Bay Uhahas asked the question, why did the bee, why is the beehive so high in the oak tree? And then also during the trailer, you'll notice that the teens have built a base around the oak tree. So it's kind of interesting that the Beehive was always over there on the picnic table, obviously. Now, of course, it didn't really make sense for it to be over there because I've I've personally never seen a beehive hanging from a picnic table, especially one that was that large. It would definitely make more sense for it to be in the tree. But the question was, why is the beehive up, up so high? Are we going to have to go into it? Because, of course, we obviously could get into the beehive before. It just had that little opening we could get into. And I think it was, it was there nectar inside of there. It was either nectar or pollen, one of the two. I think it was nectar was inside of there. So why is it up so high? You can build on the tree, but I, once you get up high enough, I believe there's no like collision up there. So it's kind of like, there's just nothing up there. Like it's just, this is just for show. But with the beehive being so high up there, the question was, is that going to be the final destination? Is perhaps they're going to be maybe... Maybe Dr. Wendell's going to be in there. Maybe the final chip's going to be in there. Maybe the recipe for the embiggening cocktail is going to be in there. Something like that where we might have to go up in there. And then last but not least, suggested by, again, by Sharkbait, ooh, ooh, haha, was, is the crow spying on us? So I never really, I looked at the crow the other day when during my stream, and the crow to me would kind of look like a real crow. I mean, I guess you could say it might be a little bit mechanical, but... That the, that that the uh, shark bait uh, 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 so he asked, is the crow a spy for the watcher? And perhaps the crow, I mean, the crow could be mechanical. It does kind of just fly back and forth in the same places. So, I mean, I know birds do frequent the same places, but for it to only fly back and forth to the same places and basically just drop crow feathers, perhaps it is actually a robot that is spying on the yard and seeing what's going on. Now, of course, the crow, I don't think is gonna be the final boss, but that was just kind of a suggestion. So those were all the suggestions I pulled from the comments of the last video. If you made it this far, make sure to hit the like button. What I want to do now is give you guys my theory, the one that I thought of, like, I think this was last week or the week before. And for some reason, it just completely left my mind when I was recording that video the other the other day, because it was honestly the reason I did the video. And when I was putting all the stuff together for it, I completely forgot about it. So what I want to do is really quickly go back to the trailer and show off two specific scenes in it that were that kind of triggered and obviously i've seen one of the first scene you're going to see has been seen in a previous trailer i think it was the end of the wood or maybe it was during the end of the wood stream or the pax live stream or something we saw this but let's take a look at that real quick so my original theory was that dr tully was actually kidnapped and put inside of this pink castle over here now i was talking about this on the ground at discord i think it was a week or two ago someone mentioned that they asked what they thought this pink thing was from the this is actually from the full release trailer, but actually this was also in a previous either trailer or it was maybe during one of the dev live streams, like I said, or de- yeah, I think it might've been from the PAX East or maybe it was a different trailer. I don't even remember exactly, but this right here to me looks like it's going to be a, one of a couple things. Uh, to mo- mostly it looks like it's going to be a pink castle. Now there's also evidence that this might be the pink, ca- that this might be a castle. And I'm going to show that in just a second. And I did some research and we'll take a look at what I think it might be. Let's skip ahead in the trailer a little bit further to see the other picture that looks that basically I think confirms this is actually going to be a castle. So here we are at the end of the trailer. Once again, I wanted to show two things really quickly. First was going to be this monster here. Obviously, the more I look at this, the more it does look like it might actually be the ant thing that's from the Minotaur maze. It doesn't really look at the Minotaur. It doesn't have horns like that. So perhaps whatever that creature was is some type. And maybe it's something like this where the person was turned into like part human, part muscle sprout, part ant or something like that. And then the other thing I wanted to show at the end of this was specifically right here in this bottom right corner. I cannot believe I didn't see this before because I watched this trailer so many times, especially in slow-mo. This looks like a, this is definitely a castle. I mean, there's nothing else this could possibly be besides a castle. And I think it's, I think it's that pink castle that's up in the yard that we saw in the earlier frame. Now doing some research, I was thinking maybe it was a Barbie castle or something like that. The bar, there was no, the pink Barbie castle was not around during this time period. The game takes place, I believe in like 1991, I'm guessing. And the reason I say that is there's coins lying around that say 1988. There's expiration dates on boxes that say like 89 or 90 or something like that. 
And if they're following actual like, real life history, the Rash Battletoad figure, the Battletoads did not come out until 1991. And the castle that was around in that time period was the My Little Pony Pink Dream Castle. It does look similar to this, not exactly the same. It had, it, I think it was pink and I believe it had blue spires, although I'm not sure if it had this in the center, I can't remember. But I think there's a possibility, and this was my original suggestion was that maybe Dr. Tully was kidnapped and is actually being held ransom inside or being held hostage or capped as a prisoner inside of this castle. And that's where we're going to have to fight the final boss. Maybe that monster we saw, we're not actually going to fight it in the Undershed area. Maybe we're going to fight it in this castle. Maybe we do fight it there, and maybe there's more of them inside this castle. Maybe the Minotaur's in the castle. I don't know. But that was my original speculation was that Dr. Tully was actually going to be inside the castle. And if not him, maybe he's in there. Maybe he is the final boss. And maybe the recipe's being held in here inside of, like, up in the top tower or something like that, and we have to get to it. That would be amazing if we had to go inside of a castle. I mean, that would just add to the... All the, all the fantasy stuff that's been in the game up to this point. So anyway, those are my thoughts on what Dr. Tully, where Dr. Tully might be. Like I said, this was my original theory, and I cannot believe that I blanked on it when I was thinking of all those things the other day. But let me know what you think. What do you think about the other users or the other, other viewers' comments that they made and their suggestions? Do you think any of those are more plausible? Do you think that this, I mean, I think this is a castle. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Do you think the, that Dr. Tully might be in the castle? Do you think that's most believable? That's in the upper yard. Maybe it's guarded, and the only way to get in there is to get a key maybe from somewhere else and access it kind of like how we get the assistant manager key card to get into the sandbox outpost let me know in the comments down below what you think if you found the video interesting make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this if you want to support the channel even more click the join card on the screen right now thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video